So today I'm going to give you a news update on the Mike Bickle scandal. A lot has happened in the last few days. I'm going to fill you in on all of the details. The complaint group member, Dwayne Roberts, breaks his silence and speaks to a news network about the charges that were brought against Bickle. Two more long-term IHOP executives come forward to throw shade at IHOP leadership. And they both seem to be pointing towards a cover-up process going on at IHOP. A full leak conversation gets out with the executive leadership team inside IHOP KC. And IHOP KC executive leadership team released a new statement on Wednesday, November 22nd. The complaint, the complaint group also released a statement around that time to refute the claims of IHOP's initial finding report. So we're going to take a look at all these things today. I will end the video with a strong warning for the current IHOP leadership team, which I think is a much needed word. Let me start off by saying this. I get no joy out of doing videos like this. It's the complete opposite. It brings sorrow and grief. I love Mike Bickle. I love IHOP KC. And sometimes have been listening to the prayer room for several hours a day for several years now. I'm doing this video because it's the right thing to do. I have over 100,000 views on my channel in regards to Mike Bickle. But getting views on this type of subject brings me no joy. I do this because we have to start addressing the hard issues in the church and have the tough conversations. I have plenty other topics that I would rather be covering. And some of the people covering the Mike Bickle story, they really have nothing else to talk about. Once this story is done, their ministry is done. I have about 20 different videos I want to release. Actually, this story is holding me back from doing that. I was in building maintenance while in college. And there were protocol involved for keeping a building up to coat, up to snuff, and cleanly. So, for instance, if somebody throws up in a building, it doesn't matter what you are doing. You have to stop right away and clean that mess up. You cannot continue until it's cleaned up. And so it's very much like this situation. We have this throw up all over the place, and until that's cleaned up, we're really not moving forward with anything else. So it's time for the church to wake up. God is cleaning house. God is refining his church. And other more high-profile scandals will follow this. We have entered into the age of apostasy. We have entered into the age of the last days church. And so the warning is now to all those ministries out there that aren't doing the right thing. Come forward now on your terms before God chooses, chooses to expose you. It's much easier to do it on your terms than on God's terms. And right now God is cleaning house and he's refining the church, bringing these things to light. So let me give you a quick rehab of the story for those who are just joining in. On October 24th, three former IHOP executives came forward, Dwayne Roberts, Brian Kim, and Wes Martin, to state that Mike Bickle, the founder of IHOP KC, a 24-7 house of prayer with a ministry school and a church, allegedly was accused of sexual misconduct with several women. And it was quoted where the marriage covenant was not honored meaning they believe Mike Bickle was having sex with several women. These are still allegations at this point. IHOP's KC addresses these allegations on a church service October 29th, and they remove Mike from ministry and social media. Mike also preached a sermon before his last sermon before he was taken out of ministry, explaining that he would not defend himself, that God told him to remain quiet, that God would defend him. So Mike Bickle has not come forward to deny the allegations. Then another former executive, long-term executive, Alan Hood comes forward to substantiate the charges against Bickle, claiming that he is in communication with one of the victims. <clears throat> now, we have four former IHOP executives, long-term by the way, that have said that these charges are real and serious and they are in contact with victims. Then IHOP comes forward to state they have a law firm 
that are coming in to investigate. First, it was a large national law firm, Stinson LLC, and then they moved to a smaller law firm in an act of good faith with the community. Then they get Dr. Michael Brown to come in and help out. With 50 years worth of ministry experience, he was a valuable resource. And so they started a preliminary investigation in-house and they used a small legal firm. So this legal firm released the information to state that out of the six women they investigated, only one of them seemed to have credibility. So they said the other five women, the charges have been refuted. Dr. Brown, Michael Brown decided not to continue to be part of the investigation. And it seems that so far, IHOP KC leadership team did not take his advice yet. He told them not to use a law firm and to bring in a third party ministry to conduct the investigation. And IHOP has not done either one of these things. IHOP did release a statement saying why they chose a law firm, that some of these allegations are criminal in nature, therefore need to be handled on a legal basis. And that's understood. That makes sense. But at first, they are trying to determine if some of the allegations have credibility. So they decided to take the initial stages of the investigations into their own hands which many people are upset about and don't feel appropriate. Also, the lawyer that they chose to bring in is a IHOP member that is friends with the leadership team, so it looks like it's a conflict of interest. As stated before, they seem to indicate that the charges had no merit except for one case. And they also state indirectly that the former IHOP executives, the complaint group, they questioned their motives, and said that they brought no real evidence. The complaint group has been relatively silent up to now. And so I started doubting, wait a minute, why are these guys all silent now? Are they backing down on their initial claims? Well, Dwayne Roberts, one of the former executives, speaks to a news network and breaks his silence. So I'm going to play a clip of that video right now for you guys. It's women. One of the leaders said he could not stay silent. The reason why I'm doing this is uh, an incredible woman actually came forward to my wife and I the beginning of August and told us a story. And I can't unhear that story. Dwayne Roberts is one of the founding leaders at the International House of Prayer in South Kansas City. He's also a former member of its executive leadership team. This has to be talked about and uncovered so that the, right, the wrongs can be made right. It's, it's not right. Roberts is one of three former ministry leaders who released this public letter last month detailing allegations of clergy sexual abuse by Mike Bickle against several victims. Bickle is not charged with any crimes, but he's on leave during an investigation by the ministry he founded in 1999, including a 24-7 prayer and worship room and a school in Grandview called IHOP University. It's wrong what has happened and it's wrong how it's being handled. Last week, IHOP KC released a report detailing one partially credible claim of physical contacts between Bickle and another woman from 26 years ago. But IHOP KC said four women have refuted claims they were victims. After seeing that report, Robert said he wanted to stand firm on the allegations he brought forward. I don't want to, to go on KMBC and talk like this. It's not, I don't find pleasure in this. You know, and I'm making enemies by coming here today. I'm, people are not excited. They won't be happy by, by me talking here today. But I also believe that, that truth needs to be told. And for there to be any clarity, confidence in that ministry, and in even the messaging of that ministry, the truth needs to be, needs to be discovered. Now, I have case. Okay, so you see in there, Dwayne Roberts, a former executive, came forward to say that he stands by the initial charges, the initial statement that they brought to IHOP, and says that real things need to come to light, that he's in communication with one of the victims. Now, also, there was another leaked conversation that was leaked out of IHOP. I played some of this in my last video, but um, more the full, the full conversation came out. And so in my last video, I played a short clip of David Slyker, one of their um, executives, current IHOP executives, basically where he dropped a couple of curses screaming with someone behind closed doors. The conversation seems to be based on whether David lied or not about whether he knew 
about charges earlier than the end of March. But it seems like he did. And so one of these people in this leaked conversation is basically a conversation back and forth between a whistleblower who's who's named here as WB. Okay, so he said, yes, you did. You told me that when we met that you knew about this for months. Okay, so the whistleblower is telling David, you knew about this and you covered it up. I've told people this, David says. I knew about one small allegation. What did I say to you on Saturday about it? What did I say? The whistleblower said, you said the story changed. No. Yes. David said, I said, the whistleblower, this makes me sad that I didn't know the allegations was until you told me. I said that. So then it says, the whistleblower said, you knew about victim number two. You knew about victim number two. And then David said, what did I say? Did I not say a few times? Okay. And then they're just going through this conversation where it seems like Isaac Bennett was also involved in this conversation. And basically, um, so David is saying here again at the top of this page, stop, I'm telling you before the Lord and the fear of God is a man of God. And the whistleblower says, cool, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that my trust has been completely shattered. David says, I don't have anything to do with that. But what if that's where we we are and then we've got nothing to talk about, whistleblower? I've done nothing to do that. I've done nothing. If you don't trust me, it's because you don't believe in someone else over that's loved you and served you for the last 20 years and believed in you. Believed in you. So somebody else did that to you, related to me, and it makes me sad. So the whistleblower goes on to say, that hurts me too. I, and then David goes on to say, I didn't know anything till Tuesday. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. The idea that I knew the allegations before Saturday was a lie. I never lied to you in your life, and I'm not lying now. So I don't give up mm, what you think about. Curse word. Because you're willing to burn a friendship over someone else's version of the story because you won't live with that. Listen to that. Anything else? Slyker says, no. Okay, you can lead. Whistleblower. I didn't spread anything. I had your, I guess he was saying your back. <clears throat> David says, I don't care about the whistleblower. You're telling me that you trust somebody else and you're shattering based on lies and you won't believe me when I tell you otherwise. This meeting is done. I think the friendship is done. And it's sad because I didn't do anything. But hey, these people are what you're telling me about those people who are you talking about. Next time when you're in a real hard place, call them up. I'm sure they will hurt you help you and be there for you. I'm sure they'll stand by with you. I'm sure it'll go well. Is that it? Whistleblower said, yes, it really is. So you can see this conversation is going back between David and this whistleblower and basically this, this longtime person with IHOP for 20 years, it says in the conversation, is saying to David and Isaac, I don't trust you guys anymore. You guys are lying. You knew about information beforehand, but David Slyker here is claiming that he didn't know anything else before before the, the allegations were released. But we're going to see that later on that it looks at face value that that was not true. So you had this <clears throat> another stain of report, one of their executive leaders cursing, and it looks like using manipulation, emotional manipulation against one of them. And it's uh, just just a sad thing. So as we're going to see here, another former executive, Dean Briggs, releases a post on Facebook and is also going to come to basically state that it looks like there's a covering up going on at IHOP and he's not happy with the process. So more and more leaders are coming forward and speaking out. They're not standing with IHOP on these things. So Dean Briggs says this. This was released four days ago. Trust is shattered. I didn't have, it didn't have to be this way. Staffers been told to avoid social media. The bubble in IHOP is like North Korea. They won't find what they've been told not to seek. Share the link, the doc in this link, and let's point a million candle watts into the shadow. I had hoped it wouldn't come to this, but the time is for the entire IHOP executive leadership team to resign. Response. So they're going to release the response on the initial findings report where the, the complaint group is going to fire back at IHOP. 
when IHOP said that five out of the six of the the reports against Bickle have been refuted. Okay, so Dean says this in closing. Update. I have been notified from a friend that many staff are keeping up with the outside reports that the North Korea reference is unfair. I know firsthand that links and posts on IHOP social channels have alternate perspectives and have been deleted or blocked. But given the tension that exists, it was sloppy on my part to attempt tongue-in-cheek humor. Apologies. Okay? So another former executive comes forward and says, it looks like IHOP is trying to control the narrative. They're not being honest. They're, they're telling everybody to stay off social media, to not hear any other narratives other than the narrative they're giving. And it just doesn't look good, right? And Dean Briggs is another longtime friend and advocate of IHOP. Okay, so this isn't just the average person. So more and more people... Now, another <clears throat> damaging post we're going to take a look at here is Alan Hood and Jonah Hall on Twitter. Heaven's Bent had this podcast where they had one student who claimed that they, they were raped and the IHOP leadership team ignored it. It was a case basis. It was only one girl that, that came forward and said so. And Heaven Bent has got involved in this. So Grace came in, I guess, to look at those allegations and basically had made recommendations to IHOP. And it looks like IHOP didn't follow those recommendations based on what Grace said. Okay, so Alan Hood is going to come here on Twitter, as you're seeing right here, right? One of the other former executives that came forward to say, we need a third party investigation. There are definitely allegations here. I'm in contact with some of the victims. So Alan Hood says, I led the investigation with Jonah Cole, and called in grace and it voted for the removal of brad from staff and though i moved away from kansas city i protested them keeping him on staff at every turn verbally and in writing to the executive leadership team so it turns out that this guy brad that grace ministries found that he was guilty and that he should be not on staff and they ignored they ignored the reports they ignored the information and they kept him on staff Okay, so go down a little further and Jonah Hall, Jonah Hall chimes in right here. And he said, Daniel Lim would not sign the NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement. It's a gag order required to be on the ELT, the executive leadership team, and has resigned from the ELT, but does not want this fact to be weaponized by any side. So then, so further in this story, it looks like here that one of the members on their executive leader team was asked to sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, and he wouldn't do it. So he was removed from the executive leadership team. So, you know, we're seeing here more and more, it looks like a cover-up at first glance, although we don't really know the motives, intentions of people's hearts. Only God really knows those things, but it looked that way. In me, I have many, many dealings with larger churches, and I'm seeing more and more that it seems normal for people to sign NDA reports once they come on staff. But the truth is, is I don't see how non-disclosure agreements should be used in the church. It just, it doesn't make sense. If you're asking someone to hide things, then what is there that we have to hide as Christians? Everything should be in the light. So I'm not a fan of NDAs. I'm not saying the church shouldn't use them. I'm not a lawyer. But I just, I don't like it. I don't get, I don't get a good feeling about it. So you're seeing here another two leaders step up, Dean Briggs and Jonah Hall, furb some information of cover-ups going on at IHOP, former cover-ups, them not doing the right things. This is just getting uglier and uglier. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the e ETL update, which is the executive leadership team at IHOP that they released on November 22nd. Okay, so this is right from IHOP Casey's website, if you're interested. So they're saying that they want to share a few important details with the public about what's going on, that IHOP has been in communication with, with multiple third parties about conducting an independent investigation of the allegations presented by the compliant group, as well as a review of IHOP's initial findings report right, which is where they refuted that most of the charges brought against Mike Bickle, five out of the six, had no merit. 
These third parties included um, national Christian leaders, journalists, and investigative firms who were involved in Me Too and investigated SBC and our, our Rocky, Ravi Zacharias ministry. There has been unfound suspicion and sowed fear around IHOP Casey's choice to utilize a law firm to conduct the initial ex examination of the allegations. However, law firms are routinely involved in the investigation of sexual abuse in according with due process. Without due process, complaints are taken at face value and evidence is not required. Proceedings are unfair and there's no accountability. So basically, again, Michael Brown um, did advise them not to use a law firm. They decided why they're using a law firm and, um, and went ahead anyway and did that. So they went on to say the law firm IHOP KC chose a very experienced in representing uh, sexual abuse victims. Okay, and they, they, they also helped with the Boy Scouts of America. Unless IHOP KC is able to verify these allegations, it cannot move forward with the investigation. So, so far, IHOP hasn't been able to really get in contact with a lot of the allegation victims. And so basically, you're going to see it's underlined right here. Right. If IHOP is presented with firsthand evidence of sexual abuse by Mike Bickle, it will immediately take the necessary subsequent steps. So it goes on later to say we're almost done here and then we're going to move to the complaint group's um, response to this. The report stated very clearly that IHOP Casey's attorney had limited information and would not be able to perform any further investigations until it could interview witnesses with firsthand information or to the complaint group was willing to present evidence or any details about the anonymous Jane Doe's. Our leadership team was presented with allegations in the form of stories told by third persons. With the exception of one victim statement regarding allegations from 20 plus years ago that were read out loud by the husband, the group did not present any firsthand information or evidence to substantiate these stories. We have repeatedly asked the, the complaint group to come forward with evidence. We have also called on any alleged victims to come forward either directly or via a legal representative. Okay, so lastly, moving forward, we aim to provide more frequent updates and addresses that are frequently asked by the community. So they're saying that they're going to remain more in contact. But there are a lot of problems with this statement that they, they just released. And we're going to look on, on um, the, the complaint group's response to their initial investigation okay so like it says in the book of proverbs the first one who comes forward seems right but then when we hear the other side of the story um <laughs> things change quite a bit so we always have to hear both sides of the story in any situation and with these situations we really do need the wisdom of solomon to rightly divide the truth this is not easy these are complicated situations i don't even like covering a story like this because they're very comp they're very complicated and nuanced okay so we're going to take a look here at the complaint the complaint group's response to the initial findings report okay so they're going to come back and basically um there's a lot of bombs in this statement right here, okay? So there's a lot of shocking things that are released. They're going to come back and respond to IHOP's KC's allegations that five out of six of the allegations had no merit or basically were nothing to it. As a matter of fact, at one point, it seemed that um, Stephen Strange was reporting from the Strange Report that IHOP was going to completely drop the whole entire investigation because there was no merit or no evidence at all. OK, so here is the response here. The response from the executive leader team, leadership team back to the group has been almost non-existent. So you can't even believe this. The complaint, the complaint group is saying here that IHOP has not been in communication with us at all. You can't even believe this. So they, they went through this initial investigation report, but it was separated from getting any information to the contrary. Okay, so right here, it is true that we met with the executive leadership team on October 24th in the spirit of Matthew 18. Since then, the executive leadership team has not been in contact with the complaint group. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're looking here. Number one, on October 24th, 
A consistent line communicated on the public forums has been that the executive leader team only knew of these allegations on October 24th. Stuart Greaves and Marcy Surge were informed of the allegations officially on October 9th, and then Stuart communicated it to everybody else on the 10th. Stuart Greaves and other executive leadership team members throughout 20. 23 and 2022 related to different situations concerning these allegations. So now we're finding that these allegations go back to 2022. The response has been one of dismissal and inaction. So basically they're saying that that IHOP executive leadership team has dismissed every step of the way. Let's go on to number two here. Allegations made by eight women whom the compliant group claimed to represent. This has been consistently mischaracterization of the allegations against Mike Pickle. The public pronouncements have indicated that a list of eight women victims were provided. This has never been true. What is true is there are a number of abuse survivors who have greatly came forward with the permission to be confidentially named. None of them have recanted. So the so they're saying here that that basically that several of the women the IHOP leadership team was saying that basically seven of the several of the women recanted and said this is not the case. They are saying the com, the complaint group is saying that nobody has recanted on their testimony. That is a lie. Okay, so this just just a lot going on. So they're going to go on here and say wrongful contact with Mister Bickle and a women who are not his wife, to the ELT and the concerned leaders, which many eyewitnesses have collaborated. Before the October meetings, the ELT was aware of these women, yet has continually identified and validate these women's erroneous recantations to support the public narrative. Okay, so they're saying that they've had evidence of Mike having an inappropriate relationship with a woman now for months, and basically, um, yeah. They're also going to say that we have never bullied anybody, okay? So there were some reports that two or three women, I think April Rose and another woman, said that they were bullied and forced onto the lips by Dwayne Roberts, but they are saying that they have never bullied anyone. Okay, let's move on to point number three, allegations before the founding of IOP. In stating that one of the whistleblowers is bringing forth the story that took place before the founding of IHOP, they're going to go on to say the ELT is attempting to minimize that and dismiss those things because they're going to say, well, it was before IHOP was formed, distancing themselves from any wrongdoing. The, mini- the, the minimization of victim number two is particularly egregious. Okay, so they're saying there was definitely adult clergy sexual abuse where a leader uses his power, his power and position to be sexually involved with someone under their power. Alleged victim number two reported years of grooming and sexual contact perpetrated by the 42-year-old renowned minister, which is Mike Bickle, and that she was 19 years old when under his leadership and care. This adult clergy abuse lasted into the early years of IHOP KC. So we have one serious allegation here with firsthand testimony of a sexual abuse that happened over periods of years, even though it happened many years ago. Okay. So guys, this is still serious. Okay. All right. Now we'll move on to number four. And this was probably the most shocking thing in their report. We need a, we need a complaint group to assist in our, in, in, inquiries of the remaining alleged victims. The characterization of the complaint group is demeaning and appears designed to denigrate and create a narrative of bad faith. The request that this process, that this group assist in the internal inquiry into the so-called victims list is unreasonable and foolhardy. A genuine independent and external inquiry is the only re- reasonable option in the best circumstances. The lack of trust and transparency displayed by the executive leadership team at IHOP KC makes this imperative. So they're basically saying like we're not we're not going to give them any information because we don't trust these people at this point. And they're just, IHOP KC is conducting this internal investigation by themselves. We want to see an independent third party inquiry, okay? 
So they're basically saying that only a third party investigation will do. Okay. Because they don't trust the executive leadership team. And based on all this information, it doesn't look like anybody else should trust them either. Okay. Let's go on to number five. However, Upon review by outside legal counsel, it was determined that the collection and presentation of the allegations by the compliant group lacked any semblance, reliability, or due process. The outside legal counsel is a close friend of some of the members of the executive leadership team. So they brought in a lawyer who was friends with the executive leadership team. You can't even make this stuff up. This is just incredible. And how they got the lawyer to go upon, uh, with, with this is unbelievable. So they say in their report, due to the conflict of interest concerns, she should recuse herself from this process of any objective standards. So they're telling her this lawyer that's friends with them to get out of the way. It's saying that the complaint group is demeaning, that using that term is demeaning. And IHOP did release a statement recently that they're not going to call them the complaint group anymore. Thank God. These God-fearing men and women have more than two to three witnesses come to them with allegations against Mike Bickle and have, in good faith, gone through the full Matthew 18, 1 Timothy 5 process. So they're saying right here, in number five, that basically that they have had two to three witnesses come to them with allegations about Mike Bickle. So there has been information that was presented. The leadership team is, not, is saying that's not the case. Okay, we're up here at the top of the page. In an act of bad faith, the ELT proceeded to demean the good faith jester from a public platform saying their approach lacked any semblance of reliability and due process. Okay, we're going to go on to number six. The document that they handed over that they made public to the IHOP community and to the public that was distributed on Facebook, they was not intended to be a final document. Okay, so we're here at number six. They just wanted to release a statement saying a bunch of allegations have been brought about Mike because they were rebuffed privately. Every time they tried to approach Mike, they felt like they were blown out. So they are saying here, there is much more evidence and many more details. However, at no point, any request has been made for further proof. So IHOP is not asked them for the information that they have. Clearly noted in the document, it is the most damning and humiliating details were intentionally left out for the dignity as well as for, for the victims. Furthermore, these details will only be released to an unbiased third party investigation. So they're saying now, the complaint group is saying, we're not releasing this information until there's a third party. To the leadership team at IHOP KC, can you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth, as Chris Tucker said in Rush Hour? Third party investigation now. Third party investigation now. The, compl the complaint group is not handing over documents to you guys. And if I was them, I wouldn't do it. So they're claiming here that demands and threats, which included dictating the use of IHOP KC's fund, generated an atmosphere of concern regarding the true objectives of the compliant group. So the IHOP leadership team accused the with the complaint group as wanting to manipulate funds. But what they're going to say is they're going to respond to this in number seven here. Suggestions were made to the ELT of various options of an independent investigation group and future care for the victim's therapy. To have this characterized as dictating the use of funds, it's egregious. Mischaracterization demands threats and true objectives is deceptive and slanderous. Okay, so they're, they're honing back saying, no, 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 no. We didn't try to manipulate or use IHOP's funds. The reason why we wanted... To reason why we mention any funds was to help the victims or the people, the women who came forward. Okay, number eight, the alleged victims presented without their consent. And this is something that I have mentioned in other videos. We're at number eight, alleged victims presented without their consent. The narrative of a list of named victims is false. A number of these situations involve women who see their wrongful contact with Mr. Bickle as consensual. The concerned leaders never communicated to the ELT that such women come forward as victims in any setting. 
the list made by the ELT of the women with refuted next to their identities implies that the allegations have been refuted. This is far from the truth. It merely shows these women do not identify as victims. Till some of the women are coming forward and they're saying we had consensual sexual relationships with Mike Bickle. We do not see ourselves as as victims. Okay, so many people had commented in the videos, why weren't the police brought in? Why weren't the police brought in? Well, if it's not a rape, then it wouldn't be a crime. A lot of these things happen in the context of personal relationship. And so a lot of these situations are semi-consensual. But it should be noted that when you bring in spiritual authority into these matters, it complicates the situation and that could influence people. That's why they're calling it clergy sexual abuse. Okay, so IHOP came forward and said, we're refuting all these claims. But what they're saying is that basically these women don't want to be identified as victims. But it doesn't mean that sexual relationships didn't happen because they were semi-consensual. Okay, and we're almost done here. Point number nine, minimizing statements that allege victim number two has partial credibility and no victim statements included. Okay. So again, they're going to say, number nine, oh, this is partially egregious. So they're basically coming back at everything that IHOP said so far and said they're lies. And they're not only lies, but they're egregious. Okay. So basically, they're going to say here, right? Alleged victim number two reported years of grooming and sexual contact perpetrated by the 42-year-old renowned minister when she was only 19 years old. We, we saw this before. Adult clergy abuse lasted into the early years of IHOP KC, and many of the details given were courageously and antagonistically read out loud by the ELT by her husband in a victim impact statement. The statement was purposely not added to the assembled documentation due to the extraordinary level of personal vulnerability and exposure. Additionally, the victim number three statement is plainly included in the document. For the ELT to state that that document did not include victim statement is a patent deception. So basically what they're coming to say now, and we only have one more point here, and we're almost done. Is that basically the, the, the compliant group is saying, we didn't release all the information. We have a lot more information and we left some of it out. We, we presented you with just basic information to get the process rolling, but we left some things out because we wanted to disclose the identities and the, the details of victims that would be embarrassing because these the, this initial statement is going out to everybody. So they didn't include personal information on purpose, okay? So right here, we're almost done here. State number 10, offended, disaffected, bitter, or ex-leader narrative. So they're going to just come home and refute that and say, basically, there were a lot of people say that we're bitter and that we're upset. That's why we brought these charges against Mike, because we're bitter and we want to take Mike's ministry away and that we have some, you know, ulterior motives and they're saying this is simply not true it's not only untrue but it's cruel we maintain and hope that the executive leadership team did not say this we love the gospels many of these men have 20 30 years in the ministry a long-term track record rick joiner came forward and called them absaloms it doesn't fit the inscription because absalom was trying to get people from david's camp over to his and rise to be the kingdom some of these men live in other countries. They live in other states. They're not looking to steal IHOP sheep. Okay, and I can't see any situation where these people are going to transfer over to the complaint group's ministries. It's just a mischaracterization on so many levels. So I'm going to close here and just give a brief summary of everything that we learned so far and just give my recommendation, my word to Mike Pickle and the executive leadership team. I'm losing confidence in this leadership team. And I'm also losing patience as well. I played a clip of someone that called into the Michael, Dr. Michael Brown show and said, when is the third party coming? When are we going to have this investigation? In the meantime, this ministry is bleeding out. And the longer this drags out, the more damage will be done and the harder it will be for them to recover as a ministry. I realize how difficult this situation must be for the executive leadership team. 
at the same time, they still must do the right things. At first glance, it seems to me that IHOP seems to have more of a cover-up environment and not an environment of letting the truth come to light. And I can't prove this 100%, but that's what it looks like on the surface. Only God knows the real truth. They did not follow Dr. Michael Bryan's advice yet to not use a law firm and to bring in a third-party ministry. Instead, they brought in a law firm who is friends with the executive leadership team. And it seems like that move was to cover up their tracks rather than to expose. And yet, they have yet to bring in a truly third-party investigation ministry. Their last statement is vague. And if they do have a third party to take over this investigation, list that, that company now. Whether it's Grace or another company, well, it can't be Grace because that's a conflict of interest. But if it's Guidepost, make a public statement that there is truly a ministry involved and list the ministry. Your last statement should have named the third party ministry who is taking over. But instead, it was a lot of vague claims. In your next statement, a third party ministry should be named and do it soon. Stop delaying this because it looks like cover-up. And if you have nothing to hide, this will only add to the credibility of the process involved for you, so you can't lose. The executive leadership team should not be involved in this process at all. And to know this executive leadership team has not been in contact with the complaint group, this is truly the biggest upsetting fact in this whole situation. Wait a minute. So since October 29th, you haven't been in contact with the complaint group who has all the information, who has, I just, I can't even believe this. But the complaint group will not move forward with additional information until they know they are really dealing with the third party investigation. And I don't blame them for doing this. So this IHOP leadership team is really holding up this whole process. Stewart and David should consider resigning now to save their careers in the future. I know Dean Briggs meant that. Many other leaders, their own people, are calling for Stewart and David to resign immediately. Because the truth is, is you, could, you might be able to save your career in the future if you do so right now. But if you wait any longer... So it seems like they lost complete communication with the complaint group. And how could they conduct a preliminary investigation without speaking with them? This is just all across the board in embarrassment on so many levels. More former executives are coming forward. Tell them, do the right thing. Dean Braggs, Alan Hood, Jonah Hall, when they should be doing the right things naturally. Nobody should have to tell you to do the right thing to bring in a third party. It seems that there's a cover-up environment has been confirmed at IHOP in the past, at least from the Heaven Bent podcast. And again, I listen to the whole thing, but I take that with a grain of salt because it's one case. But if the Heaven's Bent podcast is correct, and Alan Hood seems to confirm this, they've had a cover-up environment in the past. They kept person on staff that Grace told them not to. And Alan Hood repeatedly said, do not keep this person on staff, and they did. So I have no confidence in this executive leadership team, and it seems from the leak audio that their own people don't even trust them at this point. So here is my word for the situation, particularly for Mike Bickle. He should have come forward to state that he's not guilty, and I think his silence is basically definite. If you are guilty, Mike, come forward now and repent. Mike, if you're guilty for the sake of this ministry, for the sake of these people, come forward and repent. Admit your wrongdoing. Come to the table. Yes, it will hurt initially, but you can find forgiveness and grace. But if it is confirmed later, Mike, that you're guilty, your sins will be multi-layered, and you will most likely never be restored to ministry. It is possible that God did tell Mike not to defend himself. That's a possibility. We have scriptural precedence for that. But if you are guilty of these things, and those statements in your last sermon were cover-up tactics, this is a big problem. 
this is adding multi layers of sin to this situation. If Mike is guilty and he didn't speak up, he didn't say I was guilty. And he also sat back and watched his ministry get torn apart, his leadership team get torn apart, the, the whole entire thing come down. And he watched his people get damaged and he stayed quiet and didn't come forward. It would just be egregious and multi layers of sin. So, Mike, if you're guilty, come forward now. If you don't come forward now and later are found out to be guilty, you will most likely never be restored to ministry because your sins will be so multi-layered, so disgusting. Mike, if you are guilty, come forward. If you are innocent, come forward. Stop with this quietness. To the executive leadership team, and I'm going to close the video, bring in a third-party investigation ministry now. Bring in the third-party ministry right now. No more delays. No more control. No more cover-ups. And if it turns out that Mike is guilty in all of this, you would be guilty in delaying the judgment coming down upon him. And it seems at first glance you guys might be covering up. And if Mike is guilty in all of this and you delayed the investigation, you will most likely end up resigning anyway. But the question is, is what will your careers look like after IHOP? Will you ever be in ministry again? And if you continue to delay and hinder a third party and investigation any further, this executive leader team, particularly Dave and Stewart, you will risk just like Mike never being restored to ministry again because you lost all credibility. Do the right things now. Remember again, God did forgive David of his sin but its household was in turmoil all the days of his life. On his own deathbed, his sons are fighting for his kingdom. It was just that sin followed him. There are long-term implications, sometimes lifetime, impacting results of skin. If you guys are guilty and cover up or delaying a third-party investigation, there will be extra blood on your hands and possibly lifetime consequences. Lastly, I believe Isaac Bennett is a good man, but he's just been surrounded by bad and unhealthy leadership. Isaac should stay on and lead the next chapter at IHOP KC. He has a heart for people. He has a heart for God and the gifts and talents in order to be a great leader. If IHOP does completely eventually fall apart, Isaac would most likely be the person leading those people. He is a good man. But Stuart and David at this point, I'm just shaking my head all across the board. Like Dean Briggs said, like some of these other, your own friends are telling you, step down and resign. That's it for today.